All right, welcome back to Friday Night Gaming. You're here with Jan and Darren, and we are here to talk a little bit of TCM. We just had a huge update. <laughs> yeah, not just TCM. We're pretty much going to talk TCM and DVD. Did you set me up. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I don't know. I gave you a chance to succeed. I, I panicked. I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> TCM, I guess. <laughs> yeah, so we're going to go over the TCM news. We got some, I mean, there's some concerning news in out in the world right now. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. We'll talk about it. Well, I'll, Game Pass is gone. That's all we'll say for now. So we're going to go over that. We're going to go over DVD, the 2v8 mode that we played. Uh, TCM is broke right now. So let's fix it. Let's fix it. <laughs> 50 year anniversary. I don't know if a lot of you guys know. It's been 50 years since the first movie. There is potential. We have the biggest update yet. You got to think they're going to do something special. There's Which also potential that it's going to be a very average update. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, that'd be so disappointing. Yeah, but we have some ideas, and so we're going to go over that. That's a little segment we'll do, and we're going to finish up with our personal family tier list. That'll be fun, because we've had some new... Actually, you know what? Have we even done a tier list before? I don't think we've actually done a tier list. I think we've said like who we like or something. I don't know. Yeah, and that was a long time ago, so we got some new killers, so that'll be fun. Yeah, and we're going to give our take. It's not going to be like... It's our opinion. You know what I mean? So from, relax. From an advanced casual player. <laughs> yes. <laughs> like I use advanced casual. <laughs> I like it. I like it. All right. Before we get into it, though, we got to thank our members. And we have one new member, which is Sleep Hay, Child Play member. Thank you. Thank you. And we have Master Brandon, who upgraded to family. Welcome. Welcome to the family, Brandon. He's around anyways. We've shown his clips before. He's a crazy leather face. Dude, the funniest thing is, I so the what earlier this week, I was, I was working. I work from home sometimes. And I was like, okay, I'll just play a couple of games on my lunch break. I ran into Brandon. What, yeah. are the, what are the odds of that? I saw you guys talking in Discord and I was like, did they plan to play together? Or? No, I was just, I didn't tell anyone I was even on. I just jumped on real quick because I didn't have very much time. I only played two games and he was in one of the games. That's awesome. It's funny. So, yeah. hey, shout out to you. We did good. Small world. <laughs> small world. <laughs> and if you guys want to become a member, get access to extra content, all kinds of other stuff, check this out. If you want more gameplay, behind the scenes videos, and even have your gameplay clips featured on the Friday Night Gaming Podcast and much more, become a member today. And I get a lot of questions in the comments. I just need to say if you can't find the link to join it's in the description of every video or leave a comment i always get back to guys on it so we did have a member question from mav longtime member shout member out to the family shout out to mav if you had to hang out with one family member who would it be and why hmm. go interesting so i'm not going to hang out with leatherface because that's a disaster god knows what you're going to get into there i mean he's probably pretty chill but he's not going to give you a whole lot of back and forth no no yeah i don't think he can speak yeah, not words like us. I would say, uh, honestly, I think it's Cook. I think Cook's chill. He's the most normal-ish out of one. I don't feel like he'd like try to kill you unless you did something wrong. <laughs> he might even have a couple jokes. I, he, dude, he, the dude would have some stories. Like, remember when Leatherface did this? Remember when Hitch did this? Well, it's it's, it's come on, it's Cook. Well, we just got done with our uh, Friday Night Flicks review of the next generation I'm <laughs> you're, going, you're struggling with that one yeah i know, I know. <laughs> i'm going with uh i want to hang out with darla for a little bit and they're always doing something to get me to flash them <laughs> well i think he meant in the game i bro. know he did i, know I mean yeah did. darla of course i mean come on i'm gonna i have i wanted to just say darla but in reality cook is the you, you can't i mean who else you're not gonna hang out with hitch okay, okay wait let's hitch, hitch will slash you up okay wait, let's change this who's the because i feel like cook's the easy pick who's the second one you would hang okay out so with? we have leatherface i'm saying no hitch no too crazy johnny will probably kill you right away Sissy, you might be able to talk to. She might like try to sweet talk you for a little bit. That could be interesting. I'm going to be honest. Maybe a Nancy. I might hang out with Nancy. She's wise, old, maybe has some stories. I guess you go with like, who's the most normal out of all of them that you would actually get along with in some ways. Yeah. <laughs> I Hans, think Nancy would be a good second. Hans isn't going to give you. He just grunts. No, Hans is weird, dude. God, I, I don't. Yeah. I don't want to. Yeah, Hans is that. an odd fella. Yeah. You, know? no. you might get yourself in a bad I, I situation. I would go my second would be Nancy. Second with Nancy, followed by a sissy third for me. But yeah, thanks for the question, Matt. That was a good one. Yep, yep. All right, and we're going to watch a little gameplay video from Chaos Raccoon titled, So I Accidentally Killed Anna, or Anna, with a Door Slam. So you can see Anna running through the house. She's playing Nancy. Oh, bam. Runs in. <laughs> this looks like gas station. Runs through a door. Knocks down Anna, and Anna is uh, down for the count. The yeah, hunt is over. Did you see how she got knocked down, and then she kind of came back up and went back down again? 
Yeah, she tried. She tried to get up in her last legs, and uh, it was over. I mean, that's it all. I, I honestly, that's an awesome clip. I haven't seen anyone get killed from a door slam before. Not only killed, that was like the last victim. That was game over. Yeah. So obviously, she was low on health. Door slam finished her off. Strong work, Chaos Raccoon. Dude, great clip. Actually, one of my favorites, honestly. Yeah, and if you want to check out Chaos Raccoon, I believe he's on Twitch. So check it out. Check it. All right, let's get into some news now. The breaking news oh. here. It's a little sad, and I gotta be. This is the. I gotta be honest. This is like the first time there's actually news that kind of concerns me. But <laughs> normally, like the TCM stuff, sometimes we're like, oh, like even later we're gonna talk about the game and like the big issues. It doesn't really matter because I still like the game and every like the loyal fan base will be there. This one does concern me though because it's going away on Game Pass. Yeah, if you guys didn't know, it's been the game's been free on Xbox Game Pass. You have the Game Pass, you can play the game. That is no longer going to be a thing. I don't know. I don't know when it runs out. A week or two. Who knows? Whatever. You can look that up. But that does have some implications for the player base. Well, yeah. Like, let me ask you, what does this mean for the game? <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, it's concerning. So, yeah, my my first reaction is like, dude, that worries me because I just know how many people play. Obviously, if it's free, you're going to have more players. Now, cutting back the amount of players is not a good thing for a game. But I, I don't know. I'm, I'm The optimist in me wants to say, hey, if people like the game, they can just buy it anyways, and it's not that expensive. But will they? I don't because it's kind of a bad time right now for the game. So... I don't know what went on behind the scenes, like for this to happen. <laughs> <laughs> Why did you do this to us? <laughs> like because they did win some award with Game Pass. I thought, hey man, the higher you go, the farther you fall. <laughs> That's close. <laughs> I'll buy it. I'll buy it. <laughs> I was trying for that one. Yeah, I'll, you you worked your way into something that makes somewhat sense. Almost so. profound. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So it's. I mean, you're gonna lose a large player base. The people that still like the game are gonna play the game. I mean, it's just it's tough. I don't know. And it makes me almost think that they know an update. Maybe this is the opt optimistic side. I'm hoping they have this giant update for the 50th anniversary, and they know like going off the game pass it's going to hurt a little but they're going to have a huge rush with this because they're dropping all kinds of new stuff and we'll talk about that later I, I love this idea so what i think they need to do so they need to drop the price on xbox i don't even know what it is but have a discounted price so when people get off the game pass they can buy it for cheaper and if they have additional content like you were saying then you could mitigate the player loss that's going to happen i think and i who knows how many people on, are on xbox but i would imagine the majority of players are it's free, right? I, I feel mean, it like sense. it's the majority. Yeah, I think I think the most people are on Xbox. So it's scary, but I think we'll survive. I don't know, though. <laughs> <laughs> no, no it'll, be, I, it'll, it'll be fine. I think the game will be fine, but it, it, it kind of depends on what's coming up pretty soon. Here's the problem. We haven't heard an update, and we don't know what's even coming. Everything we know mostly is from leaks. Yeah, we haven't had a community check-in in a long time. I mean, the last time they checked in, they said they had stuff till the end of the year. Well, guess what? We're kind of coming towards the end of the year. Yeah. Well, we'll get into the section on the 50-year anniversary and what we expect or should expect. What if they came out and they just said, yep, we're done? Oh, I'd be so pissed. I'd be so pissed. Oh, I know. That's not going to happen. Gonna happen. <laughs> no. Let's not go there, because... We just got a new museum mode, and I want to talk a little bit about There's that. There's no way they're done. They're pumping stuff in. Yeah, I would like a community check-in, though. So would I. Okay, let's talk about museum mode. Did you play it? I did for, uh, I don't know, 20 minutes. No, not because I didn't like it. I seriously have no time right now. So yeah. I we, we jumped into some games, so I played it right before we played. I thought it was my first impression. I thought it was really cool, but I don't, I've don't. i never played a museum mode before, so I didn't have any expectations for it. Yeah, same kind of here, though. I didn't really have expectation. I thought I actually, if you're a fan of TCM in the movies, I think it's awesome. Did you play the whole thing? Not the, I'm pretty far in. I think I'm almost done. Like, I, I went through the outer section, then I got into the house, finished the house, and now I'm in the basement. And I didn't want to, I didn't want to rush through the whole thing because I got to where I was, like, kind of moving fast. I'm like, I want to, like, listen to everything and enjoy. So, basically, what they do is they take you through, like, different scenes and they, they talk about the movies. Yeah, like little lore sprinkled in throughout there. Yeah. I, I did just to be transparent here. I did watch someone play the museum mode. I just didn't play it all for myself. Yeah. So like, for example, I'll give you one little piece from it. Like they give, they're talking about uh, Gunnar Henson, who played Leatherface in the original TCM. They said that in the scene where he cuts 
they cut uh what's her oh name? the finger they cut sally's finger sally's finger that the blade wasn't working yeah I, I, okay i remember so this. he took off the tape that was keeping it dull and actually cut her finger to watch the guy that played grandpa actually sucked the blood now i don't know if this is real it had i don't think that's real they said they said they kind of implied that that's what happened i think if he did cut her finger they then probably cut the scene after that and then they put fake blood on or something that seems savage. I mean, there's no way a dude's sucking blood from someone that you don't really know well. everything about that shooting or that first film seems insane though. yeah would it surprise me though no so I, I like that it's part of the lore we'll go with it those are like <laughs> the nuggets they drop throughout and Ooh, i think shout out nugget, yeah, shout out nugget. <laughs> he's in there too I know. so yeah there's a lot of like cool stuff the puzzles are kind of cool just putting things together it's it's really low-key and just kind of like you get to explore around i i personally like it a lot yeah i, I think it's cool from what i saw it looks fun and i will play it the only negative that I would say is there wasn't a reveal. I would have liked something big like, oh, here's Chop Top in there. And oh, he's coming to the game. That would have been a neat little thing to throw in there. I but. think that they were so far behind on this, though, that they just had to like, I think this, again, this was supposed to be out a long time ago. I think it was supposed to be out before Maria even came in the game. Some people were speculating that maybe Maria was supposed to be revealed in the in the museum mode, but obviously got pushed back, so they didn't do it. Yeah, which is kind of a bummer, but... Oh, another little nugget that they talked about. <laughs> I did it again. Sissy Straight Razor, which was from Hitch. This this I just found interesting. So Hitch in you know, TCM1 is carrying a razor, supposedly that's Sissy's razor, the straight blade. And they said they kind of alluded to what happened to Sissy and where was she dur like, during the film. This is a story for another time. Oh, interesting. So it almost makes me think, again, I'm really hoping with that 50 year, this is, this is just my expect, not expectation, but my hopes, uh, if they don't do it, whatever. But I'm hoping there's like the second chapter of this game is coming out. Mm, yeah, because the Maria chapter is kind of done and they need to move on to something. Yeah, that'd right. be cool. Maybe Sissy was hanging out with Chop Top. Huh? You know, okay, here's an idea. We're going off the rails a little bit for a second. What I was thinking about this, how cool would it be if they made a movie, a TCM movie with the characters in the game, a I Johnny, a sissy, awesome, dude. having all of them at the dinner table, Nancy, get out of here. Come on. I think that's a great Take idea. all my money. I will purchase. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, we're going to take a break from TCM. We're going to move to a little DVD and we played a little 2v8. Here's the truth of it. We're in low lobbies. Yeah, we're I'm brand new. I mean, I played a DVD probably like four hours total or something. Yeah. Well, what do you like about 2v8? Okay, so 2v8 is fun. Here's what. Okay, my first impression. It's like chill. Like it's compared to like a TCM, which is very intense. Which I like that. It's also nice to switch to something like the 2v8 mode. It's just kind of fun to play together. And my favorite parts of it. So one, it's low key. There's not a lot of stress. We didn't really care if people got away or not. We wanted to win. Don't get us wrong. But I liked playing with you and the teamwork aspect of it. I like the low stakes and the best part is when you work together and you get a kill. I love that part where you're chasing someone, they drop a pallet. Well, guess what? I'm on the other side and we played, I was Wraith. You were, who were you playing? Huntress. Huntress. So I, we did that. Uh, I did use Wraith's ability to cloak. So I was invisible. And whenever he, uh, Huntress or Daniel was near me, he'd also be invisible, which was kind of fun. The downside of it, he didn't know where I was sometimes. <laughs> yeah, like there was multiple times I'm like, okay, I think you're splitting up. And you were like right next to me. Yeah. And I'm like, what are you doing here? Like split off, go the other way, you know? Well, because the initial plan I thought would be to run together. I'd use my ability with him. So we both be invisible and then we'd attack the, the victims. Mm -hmm. But we found out there's too many victims and it's better to spread out and cover gens. Yeah, I'm sure there's a balance in there, but truthfully, we're in such low lobbies. We don't need two on. We you can take them out yourself. And I'm happy to be in the low lobbies because I had a lot of fun. I thought it was a cool mode. Hopefully they keep continuing to develop it because I think there could be something there. And, and you don't have to choose perks. So it's like low. It's uh, what is it? It's easy for beginners just to jump into the game. Yeah. And you're not too stressed because like there's so many ways for people to escape. You kind of don't expect to get kill everyone no no it's it's too it's honestly really difficult to get all the kills we aim for perfection but it's okay if we don't get it yeah because <laughs> like at the end there ends up being like three hatches they can go in. there's like three exits or escapes so it's like kind of whatever you just try to kill as many people as you can and it's whatever did you think it was more fun than when you play solo it's different man like i i like 
it's not as uh, strategic. Like when I play solo, I feel like I'm really trying to use strategy and like figuring out the game. This mode, I don't feel like I'm really learning that. This is more like kind of honing my skills with like Huntress throwing hatchets. It's almost like a bot mode or something, you know, <laughs> where you're just working on hatchet throws and it's kind of whatever because you don't camp, you don't like do anything like that. Well, you, you say just... that, but we did camp gens at the end. Oh, well, we have, uh, we actually, yeah, we did. It's not camping gens. It's like, it's usually the three gen strategy, but yeah, we had a, a double took, three gen strategy. Yeah, so I took three gens, you took three other gens, and actually we did pretty well with that. Oh, they, they were locked down. They couldn't get out, except for then when the, whatever, uh, the hatch opens or that junk, someone escaped, escaped and whatever. Yeah, but it was, it's, that was only like, I would say real strategy we kind of implemented. Again, we're beginners, so it is what it is, but Overall, I think it's a fun mode. I don't think it's like the mode that everyone's going to go to. It's fun to mess around, jump on. But if you want to play strategically and really like test your skills, that's the normal. I think there's something there, though. I enjoy the mode. I wish it was always going to be in the game. And I think there, if there's enough people playing it, they'll continue to develop it. However, we do know that one big issue is lobbies take forever. If you're playing as a killer, I played as a uh, survivor and lobbies are quick. How does that make sense? Because because they need more people playing Survivor. You get a huge XP boost, too. Okay. All right. Well. So, again, that's a way you, TCM could take from this. Like, the way DBD does it, when they need people to play certain sides, they give you XP boost, and that incentivizes it, you know? Yeah, unfortunately, TCM doesn't have the ability to do that just yet. <laughs> yeah. Well, speaking of TCM, I think we have to talk about TCM is struggling. It's not in the greatest place I think we got to talk about realistically, not not all this family victims fighting, but like, what are the problems and how we actually can fix this game? Guys, we're going to be together as one unit here. Yeah. Okay? Can we all agree? Can we agree? No, we can't <laughs> because I, I actually, this segment, I was going to rant. This I'm going to be honest. This prepping before the pod. I was calling him on the way to work. I was like, dude, this guy's going to light people up. <laughs> <laughs> I was ready to do a full on rant because I, you go through comments and- most like 95% are like, everyone is reasonable. That other 5%, you're idiots. <laughs> With all due respect. All due respect. No, people, I mean, not everyone's idiots, but like people get so fixated on this like family victims. Like if we say like family needs fixes, it's because we're family means. If we say victims, then yo, your victim means you just, you know, oh, the you know, family just complains. Victims just complain. Everybody whines. And that actually is the truth. Everyone whines. Well, yeah, I think what it is is people honestly have a hard time seeing the other side. If you just play one side, then that's just all you know. And that's all like you just want to hear people saying things that you believe. Right. And to be honest, we I'm I'm sure we do get locked into that a little bit, because when we go on our phases where we play a lot of family, you see the you know, all the issues there, then it goes back and forth. But if you only play victim or your majority playing victim, you don't understand how frustrating it can be to play family and why it's not that fun sometimes. And there's also like, there's layers. It's an onion, guys. It's an onion, yeah. There's layers. Depending on how much you play and your skill levels, it feels different in different ways. <laughs> you know? Dude, it's so true. When you especially even think about it when you're playing a, a family member, I was thinking about like Hitch. I don't have Hitch all the way leveled up, and there's certain times I get frustrated and I have to remember. Oh, my scout's not even leveled up all the way. So I'm not even playing him to his highest ability. So it's going to be harder, right? Right. So if you don't have a killer leveled up, it's going to be harder for you. Well, and we're going to talk about like some of the, what I think they need to do with the victims, but then I'll go play a victim game and I get destroyed by the family. And I'm like, the family is overpowered. <laughs> it's true. They're overpowered. <laughs> and they can be with the right people. They can be pretty powerful. If you, if you have a well-oiled team, guys that are really playing together. Yeah, it's going to be hard, which well, okay. should be. Should yeah. Be. <laughs> well, let me just say this. Okay. This, you guys all listen, listen carefully. The best state this game has ever been in was, in my opinion, when hands came out. Oh, it was great. It was, I feel like it was the best balance. The lobbies were great. Things were like really good in the world. We were right? on top of the world. What changed? Victims got more powerful. They gave <laughs> the victims buffed and nerfed the family. And then the game went to shit. <laughs> Dude, I mean, but honestly, like the lobbies were really bad and it was difficult for the family. And, yeah. what, and, they, and we're talking about when they made the Grandpa Perks leveled, right? 
Yeah. And again, you have to look at, it's not family victims. It's like, I'm specifically at this point talking about the lobbies. Like if you can't even get in the game, that's going to create a huge problem because people aren't going to stick around. Well, and, and we have to understand, yes, there's the backfill issue with the lobbies, but I honestly think the majority of the issue comes from people not playing family. Yeah. And I, we talked about that before where it was like, is it the lobby fill issue or is it that there's just not a family and I think it was clear with the hands when he came out, there was no lobby problems. And that it's because a lot of people were playing family. Right. And the family was super powerful and you may say overpowered, but who cares? It's a horror game. Like you don't, you shouldn't escape every time. Yeah. Like, I mean, whatever it's however the game develops, but it needs to have that family needs the power. That's what gets people to keep playing family, keeps the game in a good state. You get where I'm going with this? Yeah, no, I, well, I mean, we've said it before. It's like you need family players because here's the thing. If you just jump into a game as a victim, I, I don't need other victims to even be good. I mean, it helps when people actually get out of the basement or else it's going to be really hard, but you can just jump the majority of the time, jump into a victim game and have fun, whether you die or you don't, or if you escape, I have a good time playing family's not necessarily that way. Family, you jump in, and if you're not with the right group, say if someone doesn't know what they're doing, it can be just, it's just not fun where everyone's getting out and you have no control over anything and you just got run on. Yeah, and that's not a fun experience. No, you're totally right. And the way the meta is right now, we have the rush meta. And just, I mean, just think about it, okay? Like whether or not you agree, like it should rush. And I'm not knocking you for playing this way, okay? If you're a victim, play however the heck you want. I'm talking from the overall perspective, okay? Big picture. Big picture. How fun is it for the family or even even as a victim, to be honest? I'm sure it is fun to escape, but like think about it. You wait for this lobby. Right now the lobbies take forever. You finally get in a match. You're a rusher. You you open the gates, you're a Connie, you pop locks, you do your uh proficiency thing. Yeah, you do the battery in eight seconds, you're out the gate, you're gone, right? Best case scenario right now, whatever. Now all the that family the game's over. They probably have a couple DC. <laughs> <laughs> the match is done in like five minutes. So your point is that like, it's not even fun from a victim to get out so quick because one, it wasn't challenging uh, really. And then now you're just back in a lobby waiting again. Right. And I'm, that's an extreme perspective. I get that doesn't happen every match. That's not like, I'm just saying that is like a meta that's in this game right now. Yeah. Like that's not uncommon. That does happen. And the, we have a huge problem with family players DCing constantly. And a lot of it, I mean, there's a whole nother thing with should they have penalties or not to like prevent that? Because we did just create another problem by getting lobby penalties. They just came to the uh, end game. I wish that would just come in the game. It doesn't seem like it's that hard to implement. Again, we've said a million times, only the only people that like family members DC get penalized or victims who DC before their uh, escape or killed. Right. Yeah. The biggest thing I think we have to do in this game is incentivize the family because we need family players, whether or not you think they should be buffed and you're a victim main and you're going to say that they just whine. It doesn't matter because if you don't have them in the game, the lobbies are horrible. Well, if you don't have family members in the game, you don't have a game. <laughs> right. And that's the problem. Like, can we all agree that is a problem right now? There's not enough people playing family. I think so. Yeah. Have you had any lobbies not fill because you couldn't get a victim? You know, uh, no. And you know what I'll say? I actually play more family when I'd rather play victim, but I just play family because I can get lobbies. I would actually yeah. rather, honestly, my, like my opinion is I'd rather play victim. I find it more fun for most, for the most part. If I'm solo, if I'm with people, it's fun to play family because it's fun to kind of strategize together. But yeah. So let's go over like what I think are some ways that need to be fixed. Now we've already talked. I we don't have to go in too in depth on this. Like we've said, obviously family should spawn with the victims at the same right. time because it, they get that head start. So basically come combat the whole rushing. Right. So just start at the same time. So at least as a family member, you can get a little setup. Yeah, you need time to set up some traps. That's the thing that I don't like when I'm family, when I can't even set my locks as cook because someone's already up and they're there waiting for me. <laughs> yeah, and again, it's not every time, but that is the really good players can do that pretty easily. Yeah, you'll just, yeah, every once in a while you run into those players where it's just like, what could I have done to even like combat this? And there are ways, but it really almost starts before you even get in the game. Like you almost have to have the right setup for the right map, like yeah. the right character combos. Which that's a fun part, but it's just a little too powerful. So I'm starting at the same time. That's the start. Somebody said there were some good comments that people said, like tying the noise and like if you're victims and you wake grandpa up early, that it gives him 
like an extra level right off the bat if you're like really loud. I do like that idea. It's like, hey, if you're gonna rush, there's some repercussions to that's, it. That's uh, relax. That's an idea. Okay, that's not hey, like. And we're by the saying. way, again, we're not right about things all the time. These are just our ideas, free flowing here. Yeah, doing a podcast, you know. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Sometimes we just have to talk. Yeah, yeah, that's what we do. So let me just. Okay, I'm gonna start with the victims, and we're gonna go over like how this game, like some of the issues, and kind of how to fix. Let's so, go. Right now, the choose fight. So what choose fight, you get in those close encounters or backstab, that's where the family gets stunned. Yep. And I believe it's uh, five seconds, the total, the max time on level three. Okay, I can't It remember. feels like forever, though. So that, to me, has got to be brought down. I think that needs to be like two seconds or something, like or three. Like, the way you get stabbed and you have to stand there while they do objectives in front of you, I think it's really frustrating as a family player. I think that makes a lot of family guys, like, pissed off. And it's not really a fun, I wouldn't say it's a fun mechanic. No, it's really annoying. And I get it's a I get why it's in the game to help the victims. And as a victim, I like it just like it's like a get out of jail free. Like you almost get killed, but you can just kind of tie them up and go do something. But yeah, too often actually, now I'm saying that, like the situation we ran into where Leela and barged me and then stabbed you, and we're just you're just stuck there standing while he does the little wheel to the pressure valve. It's like that is frustrating. And as yeah. a killer, just why, when someone hit stabs you, you're just stunned? It doesn't really make sense. And with the Leland Barge, it's pretty hard to combat sometimes. Like, it's tough. And on that same note, there's no reason, and I've ran on this enough, so I'll make it quick. The close encounters, the victim shouldn't have the advantage. Like, as the family, we shouldn't have to have a perk to we? protect it. We? <laughs> you're right. I'm, I'm a family man now. He's a main. I gave He's it away. Main, guys. We it found away. him. <laughs> we caught him. <laughs> <laughs> That's what we should do. Here's what we need to do. I'll be the victim guy. You be the family guy. And that's how we're going to roll. All right. We can't do that because we play together all the time. But. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> As the family, though, there's no reason family should have a perk that you have to run with grandpa to protect you from close encounters. Because I, the victims, to, in my opinion, they have the advantage off the rip. Well, if you don't do anything, they have the advantage in a close encounter. Yeah. And we'll say like. Right now, because they, they in the last update, they fixed the grandpa perks a little bit to where they moved some perks down, like suffocating grip now, which you can combat this, is a level one perk, which we use now, and it is good, and it actually is better than it was, but still, we just have the close encounter problem. I guess now, if you get suffocating grip up, you win it, but... Well, I'm just saying, as like a horror game, like it doesn't make sense to me, the victims have the... like They run at you to get close encounters. Actually, I lost my train of thought in the last one, but now I got it back. <laughs> so what I was going to say is, like you said, you have to get that. So we put on that suffocating grip and you have to get that up and running just to even combat the victims, which does feel a little weird. Right. Yeah. Having yeah, to that's use I'm, that. Yeah. I'm just saying, yeah. And again, this isn't I already hear the comments and I'm going to read them. This isn't a family versus victim. This is just like overall perspective of a horror game. I legit just want the game to be really fun for yeah, everyone. And I think for best, me and you. And you could argue, let me know if I'm wrong, if you think different, but I think the family has to be powerful. That's what creates the horror part of it. You know, yeah, <laughs> like you right. need to be afraid and not like, I might not escape this game. Well, th that's what makes it again. I think about the first time I loaded into the game and it's like, it was like scary. Yeah. And you've kind of lost some of that when you can, when you know you have like a knife or whatever, a bone shard that you can just tie someone up. It's not that scary now. Yeah. yeah. And there's a, there, again, this is all balancing because it used to be you get in close encounters, you die right away. People hated that. They went too far the other way. They got to like swing it back. Now, family does have some immunity to that. If you do get the backstab, you get that 10, I think it's like 10 seconds where you can't get stunned again. Yeah. But in most, most of the time, that's just preventing you from getting like stabbed over and over. Most of the time they run, grab bone scrap. By the time they come back, you're going to get stabbed again. <laughs> How about you get stabbed once? immunity the rest of the game well <laughs> I'm teasing, I'm teasing. if victims can do the close encounters why can't family grab or something i would like hands to be able to pop heads yeah i, mean, I mean for real because if you want something how crazy would that be and i you know guys i go out off the rails so bear with me here but that would be really fun could you imagine if you could have hands just grab someone and pop they're gone that would be kind of cool i mean i like i think adding things into the game that are just out there would be fun but yeah there's there's something in there that might be a little extreme hey, but, uh, i'm not a game developer nor do i pretend to be all right yeah. <laughs> so the victims obviously the choose fight the stun durations are you know stunning the family it's a little bit of a problem right now right 
Uh, the endurance, I think that's a good fix overall for victims. I think that's the way the victims should be. Like it was messed up, right? Yeah. Their whole endurance. But the problem is they brought it in with that proficiency right now to where you can do the battery. If your proficiency is high, you can do the battery really quick. They brought it in together to make it like the victims now are kind of too powerful. They're fast <laughs> and they can shut off batteries super fast. And <laughs> the choose and the close encounters is kind of on their side and with the stuns. It's it's a tough it's tough for the family. Yeah, and, and I'm gonna go back to real quick to the grandpa perks. I still believe that those should just be wide open. I don't like having to go to the skill tree and you have to sacrifice certain things for characters just to get the grandpa perks you want. Because I did that with Cook and I went down this route where I didn't have Scout on. I cannot run Cook without Scout. It is brutal. Especially if you've been running him with a Scout, it is tough. Yeah. Anyways, That's for our on. family section, which we're moving on to now. Oh, there we go. <laughs> that was victims. So victims, those are kind of like the issues I think that need to be addressed. And part of that too is they need to like address stealth. Like stealth has no play in like, I don't, nobody uses it. It's like an attribute that's just kind of useless. It is weird, right? They built this, this thing into the game that is not even being used, nor has it been like, they haven't done anything to make anyone want to use it. Yeah, I think this game should be more focused on your endurance and your stealth. Like, how fun would it be to play this in a really, like, you could actually use that stealth to your advantage to where you can really sneak through a map. And if you're, like, really stealthy, you can get away with it. Yeah, and, I, and we, I've seen it, too, and I agree. I would like stealth to even uh, play into your voice lines. If you're stealthy, you're not talking as loud because, dude, that gets you killed a lot as a victim. Yeah, we've talked to, about that to death, and I haven't heard anything about it. No, so well, we haven't really heard anything that hasn't been an update in a while. Yeah. So on the family side, well, we've obviously just mentioned it. The, the perks, grandpa, <laughs> you mean your side? <laughs> <laughs> no. So the family side, no matter how you look at it, the, we got a little bit of a, a nerf, like yeah, the, the grandpa, grandpa perks, perks, the nerf, because you used to be able to work together as a team and you know, you can get externals up and you get no one escapes hell. And maybe that was too overpowered. Um, but the way they did it now, it's kind of still not quite there. Yeah. Again, like I said before, I was wrong. I didn't think it was going to be that big of a deal, but it has really changed the game with the way they've implemented the grandpa perks. Maybe we need to rethink this. <laughs> yeah. So the overall, like the problem, I'm just going to harp on this because I want to make it clear. People don't want to play family. Yep. Agree. And I think whether or not you agree who needs to be buff nerfed, the real issue is that we need more people playing family. Yeah, I would say a majority of people don't want to play family. Yeah. Majority of people want to play victim. Yeah, and the problem with that, the lobbies. Again, same thing, but I'm trying to hammer this so we can all get on the same page. I'm on I'm with you. Yeah, no family, bad lobbies, right? Right. And then we have the DC problems, which come with frustrations in the game. Some of that gun did to themselves by doing the DC penalty in the lobby, but not in the game. Correct. So these all just need to be worked out. And part of the reason <laughs> all this comes into, it's like, it's, I feel like there's all these things that come to a head that make it for just this pretty, can be a pretty bad gameplay as a family. Cause the family, like you said earlier, the victims, you can solo queue and still have a good time family. You can solo queue, wait in these lobbies. You can still get stuck in a lobby and wait, usually oh, you have yeah. better lobbies, but you can get in these matches and just have, you know, either new players on your team going up against good victims and you can just have a horrible experience. If you don't have one killer or one family member, excuse me, if you have one family member who's on their game or if they're just not paying attention, if they're new, it will ruin the game because it then one, I mean, one side of the map's just wide open and everyone's just gone. Yeah. And I think we need to focus on like making it so that you can solo queue in the family and still have work together and not get just run on all the time. Yeah. So, I mean, part of that, you play Leatherface, you kind of control your own destiny. That's the way I look. When I solo queue, I'll typically just play Leatherface. Yeah, because you just run wild chasing people. Yeah, you still got your shot in the basement. But some some of the argue, arguments I see in this, okay? I want to go over a couple. Oh, interesting. Skill issues. Go on. A lot of times, most of it I'm getting, and maybe it's because we are talking more family, because I think that's where the problem is, if I haven't made that clear now. And I don't know if you'll ever get it <laughs> from my perspective, but people say that's like a skill issue that you can always combat like these situations, the victims, which there is truth to that. I'm not going to say that's totally off because yes, when you're playing with 
the right you're using comms and you have the right setup on the right map you can combat like a rushing team but overall you got to realize not everyone puts the time in we're talking most people are like pretty casual and they're newer to the game when they come in this game so just saying like it's a skill issue that the family like you're just complaining because it's a skill issue it's kind of like you're kind of taking a whole group of the player base that you're not acknowledging, really. You know <laughs> yeah, what I mean? Yeah, well, you're kind of missing the point, which it, that could be true, too. I mean, yeah, a lot of times it is a skill issue, but the game needs to be fun for even beginner and, and just casual players, right? Yeah, I, isn't, that, isn't that the point? We don't need it just to be good for the top level. I guess it's really tough. what I'm saying is we need to make it so that that guy, the, ran, the, the guys that are casual that are just, like, jumping into this game – that they can jump in his family and not have just these bad experiences. Yeah. Because that we, I mean, all that is, I just want the family to be incentivized that people are jumping into the game and playing it. You have to make people want to play. Yeah. I think I've, I think I've hammered I that. that. Yeah. I'm going to hammer that to get to death, you know? Yeah. I, I know. <laughs> <laughs> so to just wrap it all up, the game, the game's great. I love TCM. I'll always love TCM. I'm going to play this till it's not around anymore. What really, I think, differentiates TCM from DBD, from Killer Clowns, it is like a very immersive horror game. And I think we got to stick to that part of it. Well, and dude, the game is great. We went from DBD to playing TCM. And just immediately when you got on TCM, man, you just feel, you feel the cinematic, I don't know, cinematics of it. You feel like you're really there. I don't know what it is about yeah, the game, but they've plays, done a great job of that. It plays like you're in a movie. Yeah. And that's what's great about it. And we need to like stick to that part of it. You know what I mean? That tension, that fear. That's what makes it so good. Less of these goofy stabbing and struggling with the, the killers. <laughs> you got to keep the family powerful. You know what I mean? <laughs> I think the stealth is great. I Like I said, I think making the victims key. I think stealth should be some. I would love it if stealth was like something that you're like, oh, I want to put my points into stealth, you know, and play stealthy and fast. I mean, the question I, I want to say, but I know you don't have the answer is how do you do that? I'm not a developer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> See, we can, we can tell our issues with it, but we don't have the solution. And I, I mean, that's the thing. It's like, it's a complicated solution, I feel like, which is why when they make changes, they make small ones because you don't want to throw off the whole ecosystem of the game, which they did when they screwed up the grandpa perks. Yeah. So I'm going to sum this up with one thing that we all can agree on. Family, victim mains, all of us can agree on this. You may have never heard this before. Jessica Bill's a smoke show. <laughs> <laughs> no. Yes, that's true. But no. They, this is a comment someone left me, and so I don't know who it was, but I think it's the greatest idea. Universal XP. We need it. What? When you're in a game and you're maxed out and stuff, you or if you're playing with a character like Julie or whatever, let's say you have her maxed and you have your skills maxed, all that XP you get from the match is gone. What do you're you mean? Not, it's going nowhere. Oh, you're saying if you're already maxed out on, like, you're level 99. I would love to see where you could get your XP and actually stick it into what you want. Like, even if you're not using that perk or something, you know? Oh, that would be cool. Yeah, so it's similar to like uh, DVD where you have the blood web and you right. just have your points. Yeah, yeah, that'd be way better. So you don't have to Something use that perk to level it up. You could just possibly. level up the points. All right, that's interesting. Maybe maybe we all don't agree on that. I don't know. <laughs> it's an idea. I just thought I read that and I'm like, that's a great idea to have. Or even if you don't want to, maybe people like grinding the perk. Maybe the XP would just be for characters, but most of us are maxed out, not all. But uh, I think it'd be cool. <laughs> yeah, no, that's that's neat. So let's move on from some issues in the game to the bright future that's ahead. And that is the 50 year anniversary of TCM is coming up and we may have the biggest update they've ever had, or we may have the most disappointing update <laughs> they've ever had. <laughs> so I think it's smart for us to talk when we talk about this 50 year anniversary expectations versus reality. Yeah. Because be it's easy to be like, we want all this stuff in the game. We have a couple problems. One, they haven't said anything about it. They've given us a couple things. There's like one thing out we'll talk about in a second. But there's also, well, to be honest, actually, there's multiple things that they've kind of mentioned. Let's just get into it. We do have the Still Book Collector's Anniversary Edition. Yeah, and I mean, that's not even really, I guess the, the game's in that, but it's not even really, like, obviously something that's in the game. It's something you have to buy externally. Yeah, I'm just saying that's <laughs> one that thing. But that is a cool thing that they added. But are you going to get that? 
Oh, I don't know. It's the thing kind that of a lot sucks of money. is the games in it too. It's like well, I don't need a copy of the game, but I guess it's something you just have like a collector's item. Yeah, it would be cool, but I don't know if I want to spend that much money. I know. So that's whatever. Stuff. I mean, it's cool though. I like that they did so, it. So there's a couple things that they've already teased that I think need to be in this. <laughs> they really need to be in this 50 year because. I mean, that's a huge milestone, right? You think this is something they'd be, I would think they're gearing up for this. So I look at, I look at it like this. We haven't heard much, but maybe they've learned from their, you know, their 90 day debacle, we'll call it, where yeah. a lot of that stuff never happened. Maybe they're keeping it close to the vest and they're going to drop these things. Cause yeah, everyone's excited and expecting something. So hopefully they're not saying anything because they're just want to like give it all to us. Well, That's my hope. what I think, okay. One, I think what we actually could see, I think this is very realistic. They've talked about adding rain and stuff into these maps and having different modes for the different maps. I think it's very realistic to think that could be in this anniversary. <laughs> I think so, because we've already got the nighttime map with the thunder on Nancy's. That's like the first stage of it, right? Mm -hmm. So maybe that was their little trial. Now maybe, yeah, for the anniversary, we actually get some rain. That'd be cool. I think that's reasonable. Okay. Okay. We agree on that. Now, this one, I think is totally reasonable, and I think it has to be in this. <laughs> that's a bold statement, but <laughs> I think it has to be, and that is the skill cap increase, because that was... I don't know. Correct me if I'm wrong. I thought that was in the 90 days a long time oh, ago. Oh, I don't remember. No, no, I don't think that was. Maybe they just, they talked about it in an update. They talked about it, but I don't think there's ever been a timeline for okay. it because it is such a big deal. Obviously we're talking about when you go past 90, uh, level 99, you actually get like unlockables as you progress, which would be awesome to grind. Everyone wants it. That's really going to breathe life into the game when it comes in. If that came in at the 50 year anniversary, you'd see a boom in this game. You yeah. Would. And I think, I think that may be coming. Oh, I hope so. I, it's yeah, it's reasonable to think so. The only thing reason that I'm hesitant is because we have not ever heard a timeline on when that would come, and it's been radio silent for a while. <laughs> I would say with the Game Pass issue with that a lot of we're gonna lose a lot of the player base with that 50 year anniversary. You almost need something huge, and I think that's a very realistic one. I mean. For the love of God, how many of us are stuck at 99? Like I've, I've been so there for many a while, of us, guys. It is tough times for us at 99. <laughs> <laughs> Just so you guys know, I'm not at 99. I think I'm like 70 something. <laughs> yeah. So that would be huge. Now, now I'm going to go on to some things that. Well, I think they need one more thing. What? Because it's been teased, there's been leaks. I think Chop Top's got to come. Well, Chop Top or the graveyard map? I mean, I love both, but for sure, at least Chop. Okay, realistic. I I think they both need to go. I think we need a new map. I feel like we're asking for a lot now, though. But I would love a new map with Chop Top. And there's been uh, there's been some leaks, maybe about a graveyard map. I haven't seen too much about it. That would be awesome because I think everyone's kind of getting tired of the the maps right now. The mill map was good, but I think we're ready for something new. The other okay, I agree. Has there been Chop Top actual leaks though? Like I know there's like there's some voice lines. I guess I guess those are leaks. There's been some leaks and some hints. Yeah, for sure. But I, it's nothing that I'm like for sure he's 100 percent being in the game. If he is in the game, I mean, dude, how many people are gonna jump and play Chop Top? That I, would be great. Watch if they do that. That'll create that'll relieve a lot of the issues. The family victims. Chop Top. Okay, think about just this. Chop Top with a level 99 with unlockables. Or level 99 increase right with unlockables that would right there just be like gigantic for the game and an awesome thing for the 50 year i hope i hope that's gonna happen <laughs> well the big thing i'm wondering if this is gonna be the second chapter or we're kind of i'm kind of saying that i haven't even heard that that is like a thing but it feels like there's been little hints that like this chapter's ending and there's going to be this new chapter and that could be where new family, new victims maybe come in. It, well, it makes sense though. It makes sense in the context of like what the, the game and what that, the fact that they just dropped Maria, the, the definitive final girl, right? It makes sense that this storyline is now over all the characters in it, the, especially the victims obviously are here and now we're ready to move on. Unless they want to bring, I mean, come on, we don't want Sunny's girlfriend, right? Like that's not a big thing. No. So we can move on from this cast of victims, move on to a new chapter. Okay. Obviously everyone's staying in the game, but just some new characters bringing in. I, I, I think that'd be awesome. All right. It's time. All right. Now the last thing that I would love to see, but I, I don't think it's going to be in the 50 year would be some new escapes. Oh my God. 
Okay, so a long time ago, they, they we know they've been thinking about it, and it sounded like they were going to do it relatively soon. We thought actually the mill map was going to have something new. There was some teases that made it seem like the mill map would have new escapes. Now, I'll give them credit. They, the maps, I think, are very different. They've done a good job at like map diversity. They all play quite a bit differently. The only problem with the mill map, like we said, when there was no escapes and it kind of wasn't that like that groundbreaking, nothing was really exciting about it. Like we thought the well system was going to be different, but it just turns out there's well, like really the only unique thing is there's a well on the mill that you drop to the floor, which isn't that exciting. No. So, I mean, yeah. What, what was it? Where were we going? I don't know. Uh, to be honest, <laughs> the mills, we'll have to do a map ranking or something later, but the mills, not my favorite. It's not mine either. It's probably lower on the list. Yeah, I would say it's on the lower. But it was unique. It's unique. I think it's a cool map. I just think the gameplay on the map isn't that, I don't know, doesn't really. It's kind of like the same old thing. Battery, gin, mill in the middle. Is the night mill map out? Yeah, I haven't (laughs) played it. I played a bunch and we we never even got that one yet. Yeah. I I kind of forgot. I did forget about that. The night maps are cool though. I will say that. Yeah, I like that stuff. Those are like little touch-ups, you know? Yeah. Anyways, that's what we think. Hopefully, it'll be coming the 50-year anniversary. Leave a comment. Let us know what you guys think. It's time for us to move on to the family tier list, where we are going to give you our opinions, keyword opinions, ours, (laughs) (laughs) of who is the most powerful and who's the least. Maybe some that are underrated. Well, we're going power or not just who we like. We think power. I mean, I think who's like the most dominant in the family. Okay. It's kind of hard. You know what I'm saying? Well, it's up to you. It's your opinion on like, who's the most dominant. Okay. So let's start off with Leatherface. So we're doing a S tier. Darren will have a nice graphic up here for you. S we're going to go S tier down to D. So S A B C D D being the lowest S being the highest. Let's start off with Leatherface. Oh, I mean, he's got to be S tier just because he's got the barriers. He can break down. He's so great at disrupting victims obviously super powerful fast i love playing with him i think leatherface is easily s tier yeah i don't think there's a lot of arguing with that uh for all the reasons you just said and he can only he can be door slammed but he doesn't go to the ground it just stuns him like a little bit he can be backstabbed and stunned but he can't be close encountered which is huge for the meta right now so he's i mean he's s tier all the way all right so let's move on to our next one all right let's go to hands this one's kind of interesting. Oh, this is tough. So the positive on hands is that he has those traps, which are nice because it can lock things down, at least temporarily, make it harder for victims to get into areas or to, you know, to get the fuse done. Whatever. You guys know how this well, works. Well, he also has rip stall where he can rip out an objective. That actually the is, spot. is the more powerful one. Man, but he is very slow, which is the negative, right? It's yeah, kind of hard slow, to get around. He can't go through gaps, but he can break barriers too. I man, I almost put him up at S too because he's so powerful. Like when you have a hands on your team, especially when you're combating Danny, it's yeah. like, dude, a hands changes the game. I think I put him up at S. He's either A or S, and I, I personally would go S too because the funny thing is with this and the hard part, it's like. With certain combinations, that character is S tier. You know what I mean? Yeah. But like, it's like when you're trying to judge them on their own, it's kind of different. But I would say Leatherface and Hands are S tier. I mean, it's the rip stall. The fact that he can just rip anything out and that thing's gone. Yeah. You rip a fuse out, they can't use the fuse anymore. I mean, they could give, have to find a new fuse, right? Yeah. I, I, you got to put him S tier for that. I mean, he rips objectives out and he has traps. You know what's hard too? Again, it's it's an onion because it depends on what level you have these characters add to, <laughs> but we're going to assume highest level on these. Yeah. And some of these, like, again, if we don't play with them a lot, it's our opinion. Okay. We're not perfect on this No. Uh, all right, let's move on. So we have two S tiers right off the bat. Boom. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone's S tier. <laughs> yeah. Hitch. Hitch is a tier. I think it's clear a tier for me. He's really good. He's obviously not that power well you can have certain builds where he's really strong but the fact that he can place traps i mean lock down certain areas i think he's in a tier for me all right so let's go over so yeah so he he has his traps are huge just to close off objectives you can hide them you, you can, can reset i mean a huge thing with that just like hands you can take a trap and move it somewhere else yeah you can reset and like if you're get run on a little you can reset your whole object you can move it all back to the 
it, finishing line. Well, yeah, it just, it just reminds me like a battery. Let's imagine Nancy's house or something. They get through the initial gates. Well, now you can move your traps to the battery and to the gate. So now it's going to be really hard for them to unlock and dismantle the battery. Yeah, he also can be run high savagery. He's a chaser. You can have him where he's, you can just like chase down victims. Yeah. There's a lot of different ways you can play with him. So there's a lot of diversity in him, but I'd say the most important with these is like closing off objectives. So Hitch, I would, I, I think I'm going to agree with you on that. He's, I would say a tier. Not quite S though. No, I wouldn't say S like he's not at the level of those other guys, True, but he's, he's pivotal. I mean, you have a hitch on your team. You're, I mean, I I don't know. When I see these guys on my team, I'm always happy, you know? Yeah, it's true. Or when you're going against them, you're always a little afraid. Yeah. <laughs> now let's move on to someone that is kind of controversial. And I would actually say can be underrated in the in the right hands. And that is Sissy. So what would you say, Sissy? Since I've been going first, let's send it back on you. All right. So Sissy, let's go over her ability. She's got her poison gas. She can poison objects. She's a chaser. She can't go over barricades, but she can go through gaps. She, she's pretty quick. She's quick, but the big problem with Sissy is she can't block an objective. She can You can blow her powder on it, but that's going to dissipate. Yeah, it doesn't last long enough to make it really that that effective. Plus, the, the poison isn't that powerful. Right. Now, I don't know if they've done something new to her or what, but she does seem like... She does seem more powerful to me because when I've played against her, I've gotten rolled on. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. I think she's kind of underrated. I would, because of that, I think the fact she can't block objectives, I think that drops her. Obviously, she's not S. I think that drops her out of A even. I would give Sissy, ooh, she's, see, the problem is I'm thinking in my hands, she's like a C, but I'll give her, I think Sissy's a B tier. Yeah, I, I'm B, C with her from the fact that when I've played against her, she's been pretty dangerous and they, they fix that perk with her slippery. Is that what it is? Yeah. She seems more powerful. I'd put her around, I'd say B, B, C. We'll, we'll call it B. Okay. All right. We agree on that then. Uh, Nancy. Oh, sweet little Nancy. Dude, I can't talk with Nancy without thinking <laughs> poor rewind here is going to yeah, be heartbroken oh with this ranking. <laughs> I know. Well, okay. Let's go over her abilities. She's got barbed wire traps, so she can trap off gaps, which is is surprisingly effective. On certain maps. On certain maps. I've got, I'll tell you what, when I get that trap on me sometimes, man, it sucks. And I've been destroyed. Yeah. <laughs> Especially when I try to go to a well and I hit the button too early and then I start dismantling the trap. I've died several times by that. Yep. Uh, she's a good blood collector. She's yep. high, uh, what is it called? Blood collecting? Blood, I forget <laughs> the name of the perk. You guys know what I mean. We don't need to know. Uh <laughs> She can't go through gaps. She can't close off objectives and she's very slow. I know. I she know. did have poison claws, which is a great perk. She uh, still has poison claws, but it got, it got nerfed. I actually think she's better than people think. So uh, can I rank her? You can rank her. I'm going to have my, my side though. I'll put her at a C because I actually think she's better, especially we didn't even mention she's got the ability where you can see the player. Oh, that's right. I totally forgot about that. <laughs> that's a huge part of who she is, which when you're with a good Nancy and they're telling you where the players are, it's really effective on a team. Yeah. The problem, like you said, she can't block off things. So that's why she's got to go to a C. She's a little slow. It can be tough to run with her, but I, I like her, especially running. You got to run poison claws and she's really effective. I'm going to be honest. She's a D tier for me. Whew. I think we got to move her to D. I'm sorry, Mike. It's just the way it is. <laughs> but here's the way I look at it. If you're a new player and you pick up, like you pick up Leatherface hands, hitch, like sissy, you can still be a good contributor to the team. If you're new on Nancy, it's going to be tough. Yeah, I'm going to be honest. When I get in a map or a match with Nancy and I see they're not leveled up, I'm like, this is going to be tough, man. I, I could see that. I'm not going to argue with it. I, I actually like playing with her. I think she's fun. I think uh, what would help her is helping those traps, like putting them on faster. That'd be huge. She's just too slow. That's another big part of it. The traps take so long to put up. And when people see her with Nancy, you just know you're not to hit gaps. I mean, I'm going to be honest too. When <laughs> what's our thought when someone else not rewind, but when just a random player plays with Nancy on our team, I'm We're, just like, dude, this is going to be a tough match. Yeah, we always think it's going to be tough. If you have a good Nancy, she can be effective, but for the most part, well, we'll for the sake of my chart up here, yeah, here I'll we'll go, go with I'll, Daniel's ratings. I'll move her from C to D. I'm not doing that. <laughs> I'm not doing that. So that nothing happened there. <laughs> All right, let's move on to Cook. 
Uh, a tier, easy. Uh, Cook, he's got his locks. He's got, if you have the perk security pins, which you should run, and you got to run Scout with that dude too. But he is, he is so effective, especially think about Family House. You have a Cook, security pins, puts his locks on. Immediately, that house is hard to get out of. If you don't have him, it sucks. <laughs> yeah, I totally agree. I think he's A tier all the way. He locks off doorways or objectives. I mean, to the objective. And you can like reposition those too. You there's different ways you can play with them. I just think he's a pivotal in the marking when you have a level three, you can mark all the players. Oh yeah. Like I he's forgot about he's that. like the ultimate team player. Well, you when he says you can mark, when you're level three, you mark the players and the team can see them. Right. right. That's what he's saying. And which makes it huge. I mean, that's <laughs> we're such idiots too. <laughs> there's times when we've played with a cook, and I play cook all the time, but there's times when we play with a, our teammate being a cook and we're like why is that player marked? Why can I see him right now? Oh, that happened the other we're day. so uh, stupid. Forgot we were playing with him. No, but Cook's great. I mean, he's the only negative. He's super slow. I mean, he's really a support player. Like, when I play Cook, I'm not looking to get kills, but it's more of, like, the team player. Cook's an easy one. So, let's move from that to one I think we have a little more debate on. Johnny. Hmm. So, this is... So, he's the most powerful out of the players that can't lock things down, right? Yeah, he can't lock anything down. He, well, Leatherface can't lock anything down. Oh, yeah, he's just super powerful. He can't hit gaps. He can't break barriers, can't go over barriers. Do we have any character? No character can go over a barrier. Uh, no, you just have to destroy him. Yeah. That's got to be, that's got to be coming with Chop Top, right? Ooh, maybe. That'd be interesting. It's a thought. It's a thought. I, I mean, know. you'd think about it. Like, I mean, but how would we see the problem with that is how would that make sense for Chop Top to go over barriers and Hitch not Let's to? Let's not go too deep. Yeah, we're we're yeah. in the tier rating. So Johnny, he's got that lunge. Some say overpowered lunge that glues to you. At this point, I don't think that's a debate. Just leave him alone. Yeah, I, I think, don't think he's, yeah, you don't want to nerf that. He's got his tracking ability, which kind of sucks, the, where you, you smell the feet or whatever, and he, he yeah, can see the, where they are. It's not... It's, it it helps, but it's slow and it's sometimes hard to see where they are. Yeah, and sometimes the footprints get lost a little bit. Yeah, it's just not a great ability. His, his biggest is the savagery, and he's like deadly in an open run. Like, and he's pretty fast. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, where do you put him? He's a B. I, I I'm confident in a B for him. Mm. I love playing with him. He's super powerful. Like when I get on someone with my Johnny build, they're done. Done. I would say he's B or C. Where do we put Sissy? I can't remember. She's on the board. You guys see it. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I would say Sissy's better than a Johnny. What? In most people's hand. Oh, maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. I don't, I don't. But see, that's, it's in the hand of the beholder, you know? <laughs> yeah. So you want him at B? Uh, he's a B for me because he's so powerful. Like, you're right. Again, he can't lock things down. But dude, if a Johnny sees someone, if I'm playing Johnny... I'm probably going to get the kill if they're in the open. Yeah, but that's the problem. If you're not in the and open. And I'm not even that good. <laughs> but if you're not in the open, you can get looped hard, too. Yeah, that's true. So that's tough. You want him at B? He's B for me. All right. If he wants him at B, we'll put him at B. Thank you. <laughs> All right. So that is our family tier list. I think that's it, right? Yeah, we're done. All right. I think that pretty much wraps it up. So if you guys liked the episode, hit that like, subscribe, do all that other stuff. Uh, shout out to all our members. Thank you for the support. It helps us a ton, dude. dude this we, is a lot of work, and we appreciate everyone who supports yeah, us. Yeah, we have like 35 members right now, which is crazy, but I'd love to see it go up. We have a really great group of people. Yeah, absolutely. And if you're not great, don't become a <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I mean, honestly, our community is really solid, so. Yeah. Anyways, uh, we appreciate all you guys, so thank you, and we'll catch you on the next one. See ya.